Well, hello, everybody. Pastor Kevin here, bringing you today's Matthew devotion. We are in uh, chapter 22 of Matthew, and we read the first four verses of the parable of the wedding feast. And now we're going to just do a couple few more, um, yeah, to set the expectation. So just, um, well, we'll go back over, but try to remember the verses prior to this. Today it says this, but they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. That's all I want to take today. Um, because if you recall, this was a feast for the sun that was prepared ahead of time. And we finally got to the point where everything is being prepared and kind of the re-invitation goes out. People already knew that they were supposed to come. It's the type of thing where, it, you know, it's uh, the ancient world's version of a, a save the date. Uh, there is not really a, an actual date, but it's like, hey, this is coming. We want you to be there. And this is the king who's asking you to come. And you see the varied response, right? These are the people that are choosing, they, they ignore, um, they carry on. So there's three particular things that are pointed out here. The, the idea of ignoring, right? That it's just like, it wasn't important enough. Then there are those who, who you could, you could say it could be the, a subset of the other one, which is they go on and they kind of continue doing business as usual. They're just like, Hey, you got stuff to do. If you go to look at some of the other uh, gospels, like I think the Luke account, and we'll talk about how they send their excuses back look, I just bought a field or I just got married, those type of things. Um, so I just can't make it. Um, but then the last group respond in anger. They respond like with vitriol. They are um, something about the king, the king's servants coming to send this message that it's ready, the feast is ready for them, uh, makes them uh, not respond in a way that you just expect they actually will kill or maim the servants that have come to deliver the message. And that is the sign of an enemy, right? If you, if any of you may maybe have, have seen the movie 300, um, it's been a long time for me, very gruesome. Uh, but there's a moment in the very early on where a, a, like a messenger is sent and the way they treat that messenger, I think they end up killing him and kicking him into a, a, a deep well. And that is uh, the message of an enemy. It's a mes message of conflict that I don't agree with you. I am on not on your side. So you have these varied responses. And then a response from the king. And the king basically goes and destroys their city. Now, you have to know that there's, there's already shelf space in the mind of an Israelite of city being destroyed because of how Israel had acted, right? So you have, all you need to do is think back a few centuries and you know that the, all of the prophets had come together and said, Israel, you're going the wrong way. You need to stop what you're doing. Um, God is good. He's gracious. He's put up with you for a, a long time. Um, he, he loves you, but you got to stop uh, with your worship of other idols, sacrificing your children. I mean, uh, um, basically taking on the gods of all of the foreign nations around you. There are all kinds of things that are kind of being grouped up and told, hey, you're going to lose everything. And they do. Right. And, and you'll see there's moments in the prophetic books where literally God says that he would call his servant the enemy king. Right. He's saying, I have called my servant, this enemy king, to come and take you out because of how you've treated me. Right. So there's already shelf space for this. Now, that's backwards. Now, forwards in, in 70 AD, the Jerusalem is actually sacked. Uh, by the Romans, they they come in and uh, Titus Vespasian he actually comes in and circles the city and it's a horrible story. If you ever want to uh, read about the ins and outs of it, it's, it's awful. Um, but you can get it from Josephus, and uh, Jerusalem is destroyed. The temple is is burnt. Um, okay, so both forward and backward, you have these these things where like God doesn't mess around. So. I just want you to think about maybe some of you had this type of a response to Jesus earlier. Before you became a Christian, before you called him king, you actually responded to him in one of these ways, either kind of ignoring him or 
just carrying on with all your other stuff because he just wasn't important enough or he was so offensive that you took it back, took the battle back to him, right? So there's probably a varying response uh, with those who are listening today. But, but think about that. Think about those responses because we're going to get to a couple more uh, next session. Um, and think about how God reacts to it. And, and this is the thing where I honest, if we're being honest with ourselves, when you consider any king, not, not just the king of the universe, when they would receive that kind of treatment, you can't be shocked by the response. Right? If, if someone kills your messengers, your servants, the ones you send to invite them to a good thing, uh, and they respond out of violence, then it's not a shocker. Right? Uh, and if you pair this story with the previous story, the vineyard, uh, the parable of the vineyard right before this, again, go back and read that, you're going to see that there's a similar imagery, one of work, one of celebration, right? there. That was, I sent workers into the, the field, the workers didn't give me my produce, I sent servants and they would do the same type of thing, right? The servants are being treated the same, mistreated in the same way as in these two parables. And it's clear that Jesus is pointing to Israel's history and how they have treated people who have come actually from God. And they would either claim that they didn't, false prophets would rise, um, or they would kill them. They'd straight up kill the prophets. So you have to think about how you respond to, to how about this? The prophet was bringing the very word of God, um, oftentimes in warning. Um, and for us, it's a little different. We have the whole inspired word of God. When the word of God comes, are there parts of it that you act in this? Like you might act in one of these ways that are not appropriate, either ignoring, uh, going about your, your business, like that's not, it's not that important. It's not important enough. So there's like the total ignorance, the imp non-important, or you responded like, I'm not going to do that. That's nonsense, right? Are there still things that while you say yes to King Jesus, maybe you are saying, you're responding in one of those inappropriate ways to other things he's calling you to do or be like or not do. Because I think those are important things for us to be uh, self-evaluating. The king is good and we have to always go back to the one who's telling this story is one who will be treated like the worst of the prophets. In fact, they're calling him a prophet through all this. Like the people are holding him as a prophet, so they fear him. No, he's the son of God, and he's about to turn a corner that none of us would have imagined to basically destroy Satan, sin, and death on our behalf. He would go to the cross. He would be tortured, had a torturous death, uh, be treated horribly, humiliated in front of everybody, all for the purpose of saving everyone he could. You see, God is good, and, and the way he does things is different than we, we may think. But that gives us an opportunity to say, well, if his character is good and if he tells us these things that are good and he points out ways that we shouldn't be looking at, at him, then how, what are ways that we are? What are the ways that we are not uh, looking at him in an appropriate way or not caring for the words that he's given us, us in an appropriate way? So I take that with you today because your king is good. He has died for you. He has been raised so that you would be welcomed back in with open arms to the throne room of the king. You see. Okay. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your forgiveness. Thank you that your spirit goes with us to help us find these things, these ways that maybe we are ignoring some of your truth or, or we're being ignorant of it. Father, don't allow us. Allow us to work within the gifts that you've given us. Allow us to be faithful as you have been faithful to us. Uh, and allow us to see you for who you truly are. You are good, you are gracious, you are our king, and a feast is coming, and we, we are so glad that we are invited. Um, yes, and we'll get to that next session. Thank you so much. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you next time.